Okay, good morning. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Happy morning. Very nice to see all, all of you who are attending this session today. And uh, for those members who are not uh, attending the session, I think not to worry. It's, I was told this is going on to the YouTube, so members can log in any, any time later on. I also like to wish all of you happy Ramadan. We are in the last uh, now nine days of the Ramadan. Inshallah, all is going well with all of you who are fasting. And also for the rest of us, uh, we also have to bear in mind we are now in the middle of the COVID-19 season. And uh, I hope everyone is taking precautions and safety measures. Well, we are on the safety side. COVID-19 also a good uh, reminder of how special plays an important role in our life. I notice more people now understand the concept of space and spatial, especially with now with the spatial distancing and social distancing being enforced. So I think we can relate that to the geospatial uh, technology as well. Today, we have uh, with us Associate Professor GIS uh, Engineer Dr. Captain Basara Niza bin Ismail. Uh, he's, he's going to talk about geospatial technology, but from the defense point of view in the common operational uh, platform. Uh, let me introduce you a little bit about uh, about uh, Dr. Ismail. Uh, so he's also on the slide now in front of you. Uh, Niza, Dr. Niza Ismail is a Malaysian professional with more than 30 years of working experience. He works as a military engineer, has more than 10 years of experience as a design engineer, and has uh, worked in consulting firm in civil engineering. He also has experience in the... Are you guys hearing me? Dr. Didish, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I'll continue. Huh? So he has experience in the military field engineering and intelligence gathering, GIS data processing, infrastructure design and construction, implementation and supervision of civil engineering and building. In the earlier slides, he has the post Mandi Dara. Maybe afterwards you can explain to us what is post Mandi Dara all about. Huh? It sounds a frightening word. And uh, he also has developed the geometrics and GIS laboratory at the University of Pratana, National Malaysia. And he conducts lectures, short courses of GIS applications in research. Now, I hand you over to Dr. Niza Ismail. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your kind introduction, Prof. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Institution of Geospatial and Remote Sensing Malaysia for inviting me for this session and uh, thank you also for those who are joining us today. Okay, can uh, Dr. Davis is, is my slide is on, on the screen? Yeah, right? It's up now, sir. It, it is on the screen now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Neza Ismail. Currently, I'm with University Pertahanan National Malaysia, National Defense University of Malaysia as an academic member in the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, before joining UPNM, I've served with the Malaysian Armed Forces for several years in 1990s. And most of the time, uh, I've served in Sabah. And uh, the one that uh, Prof. Rashid is asking about, Kus Bandidara, that, that is one of the island which, uh, which in Sabah, operated by our, our security forces to ensure uh, the, the border and the security condition at Sabah area. And uh, that was taken about last year when, when we were doing uh, a research projects about uh, waste energy converted project towards uh, the, the armed forces locations in the Sabah and remote area. Uh, after leaving the service, I work with a consulting engineering firm and mostly I'm doing the design and construction of several infrastructure projects to Malaysia. And I've been with UPNM since 2007. And currently, I'm the Deputy Dean of Research and Postgraduate. In the Department of Civil Engineering, I am responsible for courses such as Geometrics and Engineering Design. As for the topics today, uh, this, uh, the topic is about geospatial technology and defense, a common operational platform 
And this session is not going to be technical, rather discussing the application and the critical enabler as a common operating platform. Uh, I would like to stress that all information here is available in public domain. So there, there, there is no uh, issues about uh, confidence, uh, confidentiality about uh, the information here. And uh, this presentation will, uh, will take about around 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, this is our agenda for today. Basically, we are going to look into four uh, main topics. That is the finite and infinite game conditions. Uh, secondly, the TAM or technology acceptance model. Uh, the third uh, topic will be the evolution of the spatial, geospatial application in defense operation. And lastly, the application of geospatial technology in defense. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, we, are, we, are, we'll, we will be looking at the finite and infinite game condition. Uh, as coined by Simon Sinek, he's the author of uh, this book, The Finite Game, The Infinite Game. Uh, there is two types of game in our day-to-day -day business. Uh, first of all, it is a finite game. Finite game are played by known players. They have fixed rules. And they, they, and there is an agreed upon objective that, when reached, ends the game. In other words, it has time limitation. And if finite game are played by known and unknown players, uh, the rules are changeable, and the objective is not to win. The objective is to, to keep playing, keep perpetuating the game. Though they are, there may be conventions and laws that governs how the players conduct themselves. Uh, the player can operate however they want. The manner in which each player chooses to play is entirely up to them. Uh, the defense uh, is operating more or less like an infinite game environment with several specific conditions, such as, number one, uh, it's constantly changing in, term, in terms of location, time, asset, and resources. Number two, it requires massive information from many sources and levels, operating at many different levels of command. And uh, lastly, it is not just a plan, but it was based on scenario planning, which requires many analysis. For this condition, it needs an integration of data as a common platform, operational platform uh, of all uh, involved in any operation. Uh, geospatial uh, capability uh, gives the nation uh, to manage the two threats that the nation facing, that is the external and internal threat. For the external threat, geospatial technology enables nation uh, to plan for sensor planning, uh, change de detection, contingency planning, responding to situation and command and control of a nation's security element. While uh, in terms of uh, internal threat that is responding to the threat within, it gave the capability to the nation uh, to see and uh, manage the people and places, network, geographical locations, and also uh, the, the critical infrastructures such as the water network and also uh, the road and, and airports. Uh, in terms of application, geospatial gave the advantage to the defense uh, organizations in terms of defense estate management, terrain evolution, viewing spatial data, naval operation, air operation, uh, weather or, or meteorological information, uh, common horizontal datum and integrated approach. And all this is an enabler uh, for the services in the defense environment. Some scholars are differentiating between defense and military uh, in terms of uh, uniform that they are wearing. But in actual term, defense is an integrated 
organization of all agencies within the nations. So geospatial technology gives the ability for all data to be integrated and managed and used by all the uh, that requires it. Secondly, we look at what does it mean to, uh, to people to accept technology. As we know that geospatial technology is not a new, a new technology, uh, it's, been, it's been used extensively in military operation way back in 1983 uh, during the Grenada uh, conflict. And uh, for us to understand how does a technology will be adopted uh, much more better, uh, this is a model that uh, currently usually being utilized. In accepting any technology, in, in accepting any technology, we need to know what make people use technology. The technology acceptance model is an information systems theory that models how users can come to accept and use a technology. The actual system use is the endpoint where we want everybody to be able to do with technology. So we have to form behavior, behavioral intent. Behavioral intent. which is a factor that leads people to use technology. Uh, the behavior in them is influenced by the attitude, which is the general impression of the technology. The model suggests that when users are presented with a new technology, a number of factors influence their decision about how and when they use it. Uh, perceived usefulness, the PU, uh, this was defined by uh, Fred Davis as the degree to which a person believes that using a particular system would enhance his or her job performance. It means whether or not somebody perceives that technology to be useful for what they want to do. While the perceived ease of use uh, is defined as the degree to which a person believes that using a particular system would be free from effort. The external variable, such as a social influence, influence is an important factor to determine the attitude. And when these things are in place, people will have the attitude and intention to use technology. And uh, this model uh, has been continually studies expanded to variations such as TAM2, TAM3, and Utah. And this is a model where a system must be designed and utilize, uh, must be designed to have the PU and PU, the perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use to ensure that uh, we can, uh, uh, people adopt with technology much faster. Okay, uh, this, is, uh, this is a picture showing some uh, military operation at the level, uh, at, at, at the very operation level. This is a battlefield view of people and way back in 1980s the military we are using paper and maps and, and can you if you see in the in the picture most of the information are in the paper base and the communicating the communication is using uh, radios uhf or vhf uh, but uh, you have uh, you all have only a paper map and somebody else definition of what you should see is different between uh, person and commanders. And the only means of communication you have is just a radio. And if you are lucky, uh, you, are, you are having a good infrastructure to, to support the operation. But in reality, this is what we have in the battlefield. So we can see here that uh, we don't have uh, much uh, infrastructure, which the technology now able uh, to show, like the, the, the GIS, application and so on and so forth. Uh, the problem is concerning the usage of geospatial data at different level of command. As you can see at the battlefield, it used a very manual type of uh, displaying of information, while in the, in the formation headquarters, they are using an advanced uh, GIS and geospatial application. Uh, in defense, 
uh, as in any business, a line must be drawn drawn between what is desirable, highly desirable and essential, and the discrimination must be made in terms of what is affordable. Uh, and with this, uh, actually, there is a very significant difference between low, lower command usage of just spatial data and the higher command usage of spatial data environment. Okay, uh, these are the difference between several command of what they are doing and what are the geospatial uh, technology being utilized. Uh, the base plan, uh, defense organi uh, the defense organization requires mapping and related product in order to support operations, planning and training. The fundamental problem is that the amount of effort to produce a, a digital geographical product is far greater than to reproduce it, and this need burden sharing between all agencies uh, that have geospatial data. Uh, the, the term barrack is used uh, to encompass uh, a wide range of asset management, training, and infrastructure activities that requires to support the military in their peacetime location. While the battlefield, uh, this is where the specific use for specific mission uh, and currently mostly uh, uh, the the troops on ground are using paper based geospatial data so there are the need the a need to bridge all of this to ensure a common operating platform utilizing geospatial technology is being done in Malaysia uh, especially next uh, this is the evolution of uh, geospatial data uh, technology from analog to digital map. Uh, as, as I mentioned previously, uh, digital geospatial data were employed extensively for first time during military action in Grenada in 1983. Uh, an overall view of, of the, the evolution is that what changed dramatically is that we have gone from paper maps to digital maps. Uh, we have gone from specialized system to even analysis data to to now uh, where everybody want access to geospatial information online on time on demand with accurate information uh, it is no longer just the commanders who might have access to a radio everybody has a device and everybody expect to be able to use that information instantly uh, they just don't want to uh, to only have a workstation, but they also want to have a mobile or a tablet that need to be connected in a mobile world. And uh, from from 1970s, uh, from a single user, it being it being transformed uh, to a national grid or, or national infrastructures uh, operating uh, with uh, multiple information and multiple agency. What really changed is the speed of information, the speed of connectivity, the enabling of mobile system, but in the middle of that become a digital revolution and the ability to create custom product. And, and this product is, being, is not just about putting uh, overlays, but uh, analyzing it to ensure uh, the, the success of any military operation. Uh, the ability also, if you look at the national infrastructure grid currently now, have the ability to bring information from many, many sources to fuse that information together in some way to be able to meet specific operation, specific need, and to be able to share that with people and to co collaborate even when they are mobile. And this is vital for all defense application. Uh, in other words, from fragmented uh, use of information to collaborative working environment with multiple formations such as services such as Army, Navy, Air Force, even the APMM uh, on one common operating platform. This collaborative uh, environment uh, is seen to, to, to try to, uh, to concentrate data and, and improve the, the, the data transmission between all required defense agencies 
and uh, the evolution clearly shows that from single users it will it will go for for a multiple user environment Now, uh, what are the important catalysts that, that improve the geospatial technology? There are mainly four catalysts which improve the geospatial technology in defense, especially in defense. That is the GPS, uh, uh, Global Positioning System, the UAVs, the High Resolution Satellite Imagery, and the GIS. And it improved uh, in terms of uh, position accuracy, uh, accurate play, wep weapon placement, time synchronization, and enhanced system performance. And this improvement uh, currently are seen at the higher level of command. And, and if we can uh, ensure that a common platform is being, being utilized so that all level of command is utilizing the same data, and, uh, and it will uh, improve the situation uh, significantly, uh, whether it is on battlefield or at the formation level. Okay, uh, these are the the example of uh, a module that is being used at the battlefield. GSMS stands for Geospatial Mobile System Module, and. Uh, if you see the, the module, it focuses more on what are the terrain elevation, terrain evaluation, on-road speed system, and others, uh, others uh, analysis to be done by, by the lower level commander. And these are the, the most important criteria for them. But at the higher level, uh, the, the, the use of the, the spatial data is, is more broad and not specific to an area. Next, uh, I will I'll be I'll be uh, talking about uh, this concept. This is actually uh, what being developed by BGSP, uh, Bahagian Geospatial Pertahanan, uh, of the GSMS uh, system, and we can see here that. Uh, we are trying uh, what they are, they are they are looking at that to ensure that the user at the world lowest level are having sufficient uh, information uh, uh, to be utilized for their operation and developing uh, this uh, infrastructure is very costly and uh, from my uh, from uh, my experience and and information gathered from BGSP it, it took them uh, quite a, uh, a time, uh, more towards 10, uh, 10 years, uh, still in ongoing to develop uh, Malaysian Armed Forces geospatial capability. Uh, we might ask, why does it is important? Why does the, the, this technology important? So basically, this technology are transforming data to information, information towards intelligent and intelligent, become a knowledge to make a, 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 a learned decision or decide decision superiority by having proper and uh, and many sources of information then and this information must be managed must the information must be uh, evaluated with a proper system and and processes and it is not just about technology it still involves people, process, and information that is re that required uh, to enhance the decision superiority. And in Malaysian context, uh, these are the operational contexts that that we are looking in, especially uh, about the NCO. The NCO is a network centric operation, whereas we are we are we are operating with multi forces. Uh, to ensure that we have sufficient resources on site and also the technology train, trends of the information technology and communication is, is the main driving change and creating opportunity for MAF. Uh, these are the key area uh, that uh, we need uh, to move forward from hard copy products toward a more uh, 
uh, GI being shared across the infrastructure. In terms of developments of this system, these are the, the basic master plan which have been derived by the Malaysia uh, by the BGSP, and 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 you can see there uh, the most of the the master plan focus on what are the user requirement, uh, what are the concept of employment, and the concept of use, and these are the three main basic focus, which uh, if I can relate to the 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 TAM model which must be identified to ensure that people and commanders utilize the system and accept the technology much faster and better. Some uh, requirement in the process, a massive digitization is needed uh, to support the current weapon system that we have. We have the Agusta, uh, we have the Jernas, we have the Atta, uh, we have the Sukhoi, and all these must be integrated for their specific use and mission specific. And the, the, the main focus would be what, are, what system that we can develop to ensure that every party, every services, every uh, players uh, will utilize them to their specific needs. Uh, the increased use of GIS also have been being, being improved with advanced military weapon system and sensor and system. Uh, we, we have drone currently, intelligent preparedness of battle space, uh, war game, simulator, NBC or CBRNE, uh, CBRNE, uh, that would be the chemical, biological and radiological warfare and defense hub. Uh, defense hub uh, will uh, usually will be related uh, to pandemics like uh, currently the COVID-19. And uh, the uh, development of the geospatial technology capability for Malaysia are to support this NCO, network-centric operation. Whereas we have multiple services uh, working and, and operating, and we need one specific data right, to ensure that all users are having sufficient information for their operation. Common geospatial picture uh, to support uh, the information and the decision, uh, like the decision support to commander, analysis and ex exploitation, uh, shared situation awareness, uh, the dynamic feed, temporal data, mission specific, and also uh, the other data from other agency which could be integrated in one uh, defense geospatial uh, uh, database. Having said that, uh, the principal driver for operational users pr perspective mainly are relevant and what the user want to support his mission timely it must be pro provided efficiently and quickly and accurate. It is sufficiently accurate to support the mission. And uh, they are, uh, we, are, we are having this UGO for defense that is trying to deliver an effective plan of common geospatial information system, services, and people optimized to, to meet the needs of nation combat ready forces. What most important in, in having this data is about the, uh, the, the, the security and secrecy element of uh, the data. And with that, several level of user must be identified. Uh, these are the proposed system currently uh, being, being proposed by the BGSP. They have the tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. Uh, and, and these are the people who can access and use the data. And, uh, and uh, without having a security or safety element, uh, we will we'll lose all this data to more uh, after we, we, are, we have, uh, have, uh, we have uh, invest in a very, very 
much uh, investment to develop the system. To ensure that uh, geospatial technology uh, is interoperability uh, between all services, these are the, the enablers or the, the, the requirement. We must have training, we must have the equipment, we must have the personnel, information, doctrine and concept, proper organization, uh, massive infrastructures and logistics. And having this, then we can, we can have a good geospatial uh, uh, technology and data that support uh, the defense, especially Malaysian Armed Forces. And uh, before I conclude uh, my, my session, uh, these are what uh, the common geospatial, geospatial picture to support the network centric operation. And the focus will be the decision security. And we, we, are, we, are, we are integrating information from agencies such as the remote sensing, hydrography, meteorology, geography, and aeronautical information. Uh, to have one information support or common geospatial pictures uh, to be utilized by joint operations or and other uh, military operation. As a conclusion, integration of geospatial technology provide decision maker with common operational platform with accurate and timely information. The fusion of this capability allow operational tasks to become accomplished rapidly, efficiently, and effectively. And geospatial data analysis support decision from section commander to the commander in chief. That is people, policy, data, standards, and technology. With that, I, I thank, uh, I thanks again uh, IGRSM for for giving me this opportunity, and uh, I I give back the, the floor to uh, Dr. Dinesh. Um, yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Nisa. Uh, you give a very good overview talk, and uh, and we have I've seen that we have about now 48 people watching us on the YouTube. And uh, earlier, the secretary had, uh, told the members if there are any questions, they can type it into the YouTube uh, a chat section. Eh? Uh, do you see any questions over there? Or did the Dr. Dinesh get any question yourself, Dr. Dinesh, from the participant? Um, so far, there's no questions here yet. All right. So probably people are still uh, chewing the talk. Now, Dr. Nisa, currently yeah. we are yeah. in the COVID arena. Is there yes. any uh, particular program or exercise embarked by the defense GIS on the virus? Is there any uh, mapping done or is there any sp special... Uh, you know, a tracking of this uh, virus as far as defense is concerned? Oh, <laughs> thank you, bro, for, for, for that question. Okay, uh, actually, we are, we are having uh, presentations and uh, to hospital and, uh, and hospital in, in one of the uh, state in Malaysia. Uh, uh, from what uh, being discussed, actually, we are, we are not having a, a very good platform to share data. And yes, if you, if you see, there is uh, there is several organization coming up with dashboards uh, to monitor the situations of uh, COVID-19. But that data is more towards of display and visualization of the current conditions. It is not uh, on the analyzing part. So uh, yes, uh, one of uh, the, the 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 proposal made by a hospital uh, in Malaysia, that is Hospital Melaka, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is about uh, to integrate the special information towards uh, uh, social network uh, or network analysis so that they can uh, do the, the tracing, con contact tracing more efficiently. But at present, uh, the data is very confidential. And uh, what we are seeing is just uh, the tip of the iceberg of what are happening in Malaysia, Prof. 
Yeah, thank you for the response. Now, as we enter the new phase of the our relaxed uh, M M MCO <clears> on <throat> the movement control orders, that more people start to move. Yesterday, I was out. Almost all the shops now have started to open up, and uh, maybe after the Hari Raya, after the 9th of June, maybe we get more relaxed conditions. So as more people move about, and uh, if the virus is still uh, as strong as it is, then there's a likelihood of uh, infection if people get close to each other or close to infected person. Now, under this situation, if we could share the data, with, which is the, which the Ministry of Health is collecting and the hospitals have and so on, and they have local lo local level of GIS. That means, let's say, if you are staying in Serdang and you get the local broadcast of what's happening around you. For example, you hear that the, there's a mall in... Uh, in say, I don't want to mention a name, there's a particular mall, yeah. there was one or two cases there. And it happened yesterday. So those people who have frequented the, that place are already on the alert based on the public announcement which they can get from the public GIS. Now, yeah. on the other hand, also telephone numbers are being taken by some shops. And if they are fed into a GIS system, then the alert can be sent very quickly as well. And of course, we need cooperation with companies like Telecom Malaysia, and if uh, agencies like Messi comes in, we can actually coordinate a very simple local level GIS. And I think people will get greater awareness of what's happening around them. And more of them will take necessary precautions uh, to control uh, from being infected or to spread the virus. So in this case, in the case of the military, it becomes more important still because you have a personnel who are mixing with the community. Uh, I'm sure you have some SOP about people or your personnel who come back to work and how they move about in society. At the moment, they are also at the roadblocks. So they are also exposed to the virus. And uh, you also being among the frontliners in the country, uh, of course, of critical importance to be taken care of. So maybe you can reflect on that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the crowdsourcing strategies uh, to gather information and uh, with just partial information. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? I think that there is one comment about uh, how far are we adopting the geospatial technology? Uh, well, uh, in defense, uh, especially in Malaysian Armed Forces, uh, way back 10 years ago, they started uh, uh, to have this uh, committee and to build the infrastructures of geospatial technology by having uh, a collaboration with all agencies such as the the Japan's uh, meteorology and, and and all agency that have this uh, data to be integrated and yes we are, we are in 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 the early phase of uh, adopting this technology but uh, it is not uh, it is not new to the military especially uh, we have we have been using uh, this data but it is just to have the infrastructure is, is quite uh, uh, is quite a large and massive investment. Yeah, I noticed the state levels they have their committees lah. They have the task force on uh, yeah. COVID and so on, and the, the GIS uh, committees that we have set up much earlier before that you just mentioned, they all can play an extremely uh, a useful role here especially when it comes to the interface with the general public. What I notice now, a lot of the information now is understood well by uh, people at the top. But the people at the, uh, at the grassroots, not all of them are so sensitive or alert about uh, this information. But if the in information through a local GIS is transmitted to the people, I think there will be greater awareness and appreciation. Yes, bro. Uh, the great bro. Mind. Maybe we can have a greater uh, player of the of our committees playing the role in the local levels. Any other questions? Mm, I've copied on a few questions. Let me put it. Let me share the screen for this. Give me a second. Huh? No, not this, not the one who else can I? Oh, 
Alright, um, these are the questions I copied down. So I think the, um, yes, the answer has already answered the first question. So the second question is this and this over here. Yeah, I think Dr. Risa, you can see this question. Eh? I think first one, we already answered just now. Second one, how people in the geospatial industry can be part of this geospatial adoption strategy in Malaysia? Yeah. The question number two, Dr. Risa. Okay. Uh, how are people in geospatial industry can be part of geospatial adoption strategy in Malaysia? Uh, that, that is a very, very broad question to, to answer. And, but actually, uh, uh, the data required is is there. Just that we need to 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 strategize uh, what uh, and how how do, do do we manage the data? For example, uh, like like uh, Prof mentioned about the COVID nineteen, yeah? uh, we have a, a local authority with the data, but the data is not being utilized to the maximum. So by by having all this data, presenting it in terms of uh, a format which can be utilized to analyze, that will be a good strategy because that is how people will see uh, the, the benefit of the data towards their workflow, the benefit of the data towards what, what they need to do. Currently, uh, most of data is just about a location. It is, it is not about how we utilize the data to give the meaning to the data in terms of other applications, such as network analysis, buffer analysis, and so on and so forth. And one of the main strategy is uh, for, for people to buy in of this geospatial adaptation is that uh, we must ensure that the perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use of the data uh, towards their workflow in 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 a very specific way. Uh, that, that, that may, maybe I can answer in, in that terms. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the third question I see here, you have a lot of experience when you have so many platforms to work with uh, in, the, in, the, in Mindef. Uh, how do you find, uh, the, or how do you con do a seamless integration uh, between platforms, maybe if you can give uh, one or two situations of this, well, well, or well, share well, on it. Uh, the, the most common problem would be will be the standardization of the information. Uh, what what are the strategies by being, being adopted now is is called the burden sharing. Uh, uh, it will be a very very large investment for the defense or the Malaysian armed forces to develop its own new special data. Uh, what uh, they, they they are doing is that they are harvesting all the information from uh, the meteorology, uh, GPS, uh, the, the drainage and irrigation, the local authority, uh, and uh, try to standardize the data so that it can suit for the usage of uh, any defense operation or military operation. Because in defense, okay, yeah, I got you. Thank you yeah. very much. Yes. Sure. Any follow-up comments or questions? So if uh, no, no further questions, then uh, maybe we can uh, bring the session to an end. I'd like to thank all of you who took the time and the effort to come here. It is the second talk we have this year, and the first one we have had online. I'm reading that generally uh, people are able to listen to this presentation quite clearly. Although there are one or two comments that uh, some places not so clear, so please, uh, <coughs> please uh, forgive us if there's any shortcoming in the presentation. That was our first experience going totally online, but maybe it's a future direction for talks in the future when uh, we are not allowed to gather in large numbers. So Dr. Niza set a very good example today with uh, with giving the talk. You are the opening speaker for the online uh, CPD talks in the future.
Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we can also in future get more speakers and also get more people to come listen to us. And also while you are here uh, and watching, there is a thumbs up a call uh, icon there. If you like the show, please uh, click the like. You know, it'll give the due appreciation to the secretary to put all effort to do this work. And uh, before I sign off, I'd like to thank everyone and I'd like to in also inform you, let's take care of ourselves and let's stay safe. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you very much, bro. Macam mana nak ni eh?